It's game 48 of the 2023 Banana Ball World Tour, loved by our dearest of friends over at Zappos. The Bananas at 24 and 21. The Party Animals 18 and 16. Trying Ladies to split Alabama as the Nanners try to add their third state onto the their war path here Anderson throughout the 2023 tour. Nanners have been rolling in June. As has their starter, Cowboy Kyle Lewix, who across his last three outings in 17 and a third innings pitched, just three earned runs, a 1.56 ERA, 15 hits, only a couple sprints given up, 12 strikeouts, and six points earned compared to just two lost. Yeah, and Kyle Lewis, by the way, in his last start, seven innings pitched, only three hits allowed, one run, an unfortunate earned run for Kyle, and only one point earned. It was a complete pitcher's duel between right, him and Dylan Porter in rompers. But Kyle Lewis finally earned his first win of the season against the Party Animals with an average MPI of three minutes and 27 seconds. He's going to look for a lot of the same things here today in Rickwood. He's coming off those seven innings of one run ball, just two hits allowed. One of his best starts on the tour thus far as he retrieves a banana ball from Vincent Chapman who didn't get to be a part of this last year, had some umpiring duties he had to take care of back in the Lone Star State. As you get a look at Kyle's numbers on the tour, 97 and a third innings overall. That is a tour high, as are the strikeouts and hits allowed, and the ERA continuing to fall, now at 5.55 overall. Yeah, and you've got a 95 ERA plus for Kyle, just five percentage points below the tour average. And we're continuing to see the Tor ERA drop as well as Kyle Lewick's ERA. Let's take a look at the Party Animals lineup. Prepared to try and do some damage against Kyle Lewick's. Reese Hampton, Bryson Bloomer, and Jake Skull due to swing it in the first. You can always pencil them into that top three in one order or another. Tanner Thomas cleaning it up for the third straight game. Now Dalton Cornett in the five hole, handling the catching duties tonight. Chase Acuff at short, hitting sixth. Breland Almodova in left behind him. And Joe Lytle, Jason Swan, and Dustin Baber at second base, rounding out the Party Animals lineup. And speak of the devil, we have the 10 hitter, Mr. Derek Ginger in the booth. We'll get to him in a second. First, Jesse Cole with one final message for the sold out crowd here in Rickwood Field. Birmingham, it's time. So now on three, I need everyone here to yell, start the clock. One, two, three. Showtime. Leading off for the party animals, number six, Reese Hampton. The switch hitting center fielder at the top of the order, 12th round draft pick back in 2018 by the Detroit Tigers. And the pride of Charlotte, North Carolina. Leading the tour with his 414 batting average and 481 on base percentage. And the OPS plus you see on the graphic there, two times better than your average hitter on this 2023 tour. He's been putting up video game numbers and ahead one ball and no strikes. Are you a crawling baby? Dustin Baber, thanks so much for popping up in the booth with us, my man. You can be a part of our show. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry. Hey, that's okay, buddy. Let's get that mic a little closer to the old mouth so we're ready to rumble. Oh, I just missed it. Reese fouled out to a fan to begin last night's ball game in Regions Field. He just had an all-time banana ball high 25 game hitting streak end. As that one gets the outside corner. And fouls it straight back. Dustin, you're rocking a glove here tonight. You told me from the early 1900s? Yeah, the 1930s is where I was told it was from the era. So uh, I thought that it'd be more fitting than anything to come to this field this, here today. DR Meadows, diving catch to Rob Reese Hampton of a leadoff base knock. What a way to begin round two in Rickwood Field. You're telling me that was a little looper off the bat of Reese Hampton. 
but DR Meadows with an excellent jump and full extension there at the very end, able to get that ball in his glove rather than trap it. That is an excellent gem to start the ball game for the Bananas. Now Bryson Bloomer uh -oh. has been moved up to the two hole from number three overall. He spent the vast majority of the past few weeks. Cleanup hitter for first couple months of the tour. And he tests DR again. Mr. Meadows backflipping makes the catch. A stupendous trick play. And the doctor putting on a show two batters into the ball game. All right, it's about time we hit it somewhere else. All right. <laughs> we can see DR's on his game today. All right, we, we tested him. Let's move to somebody else as a bat. All right. <laughs> Never gets old seeing that. And the 24th trick play in 27 tries for the tour leader for outfielders in the trick play department. And now Jake Skull takes a heater high. And what's impressive about that play, the sun beating right down on DR Meadows, and he was unfazed able to catch that ball. Just great instincts by DR Meadows, and really, you're used to it at this point. One, one count on Jake Skull. 15th overall pick back in the 2010 draft. Texas Rangers nabbed him, had him for five years before the New York Yankees had him in the minor leagues for a pair. And then four years Trickier. at the University of Georgia as a football player as Jackson Olsen on the first base side of second right, bounces it to first. Two trick plays in the first, a one, two, three frame for Kyle Lewix. Let's pop up in the booth real quick so that Dustin Baber can show off this beautiful glove before he has to sprint down and take second base. Oh yeah, a little known fact here, the pinky doesn't bend at all, if you didn't notice. It's just completely padded up, so uh, are we going to consider a trick play if I catch it? I was I was going to ask you, Baber, what do you think is the, the best trick play to use with a glove from this era? Uh, catch the ball. That's kind of where I think the <laughs> trick play is at. It's a testament to how good these guys back uh, back in the day were, like, really looking at it. It's basically just your hand and a piece of leather in between you and the ball. I was playing catch with it, and Chase was kind of bumping the velo up pregame, and it was absolutely terrorizing my hand. It was terrible, but I'm going to see what I can do with it today. I mean, we got a hard surface out here. We got a lot of opportunities, especially with the uh, especially with the slow infield on the grass. So I'm going to try and put some trickery today with this new glove and see what I can put together for you guys. I well, wish the, you the best of luck, my dear man. <laughs> and the trick play field is ever evolving, so you never know. We may give you one if we like what we see. All right, I'll go ahead and test it out for you guys. Yeah, Baber, we got to free you. You actually have to play second base. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, apparently there's a game going on. Yeah, there goes Dustin Baber. We really appreciate him popping up into the broadcast booth. He has to grab his position behind Dylan Porter in the field. You take a look at the man who has become the party animal's ace over the past couple months. The ERA down to a team best 410. In fact, Danny Hosley is the only man on the tour who has a better earned run average overall. And Mr. Porter just continues to cruise as of late. Looks like he's got one of these old fashioned gloves on as well. Yeah, and that's what you like to see when you field your position at the, as when you field the pitcher position, you can afford to wear a glove like that in the field. Great creativity from Dylan Porter who continues to dominate on the mound. A 2.08 ERA here in the month of June and he had a 2.45 ERA in the month of May. He's been solid over the last two months for the party animals. Looks like he is going to get rid of the old-fashioned glove as Sean Fluke will throw him a new piece of leather from the dugout. Here's how the Nanners line it up against him. DR Meadows with two eye-popping catches in center field in the top half of the first will lead it off. Then Eric Jones Jr. at first, Michael Deeb at left. I'll do to swing it in the first inning. Dan Oberst, Dakota McFadden, Jackson Olsen, Ryan Cox, Bill Leroy, Danny Hosley, and Noah Bridges will round out the Bananas lineup tonight. Yeah, the Bananas have some very talented batsmen on their squad. Lately, we've seen a lot of punch and judy work from the Bananas. A lot of singles, not so many extra bases. In fact, they haven't had a home run since Tulsa on May the 29th. Maybe they'll run into one here in Rickwood today. DR swinging at the first pitch he's offered tonight. Porter usually low to mid 90s with the fastball. And he will add a curveball slider and change up to supplement the heater. Gerber has been one of the most consistent bats for the Nanners on the tour. 
hitting 346, second best on the team, fifth best overall. 435 on base percentage as Dylan Porter winding up that arm of his. And now a one two count on top. Satchel Page esque there from Dylan Porter really harkens back to those original days of Major League Baseball. 2 2 count on the Nanner center fielder. The Bananas just need one run to win this first inning. DR hangs tough as that one is not caught by a fan. Just barely snuck under the lip of the grandstand roof here. So our high home camera is on top of the roof. Ben Barks holding it down on top of the press box here as DR is plunked. Fourth time he's been hit by a pitch on the tour as he collapses, starfished on top of home plate. And he's gonna need help from his teammates as they are going to crowd surf him in a way. The 90 feet from home plate to first base. How about number five hanging 10? <laughs> The inning winning run is aboard. Now batting number three, Meadows with great Aaron speed, 18 Jones. for 24 on the tour. Third overall in stolen bases. Now Eric Jones Jr. will swing away in his second world tour. Former minor leaguer with the Seattle Mariners and Minnesota Twins as Meadows has his 19th swipe bag overall in the inning winning run is now in scoring position. And you saw from the minute DR Meadows was taking his lead off of first base that he wanted to steal that base off of Dylan Porter and credit him an excellent jump and a great throw from Dalton Cornett. But again, that jump from Meadows even better. Full capacity, Rick Woodfield, all baby sharking, clapping in sync. As the heater gets the top of the zone to EJ. Was the Seattle Mariners bullpen catcher a summer ago. Helped transform that team. Turn the Mariners into the most feared bullpen in baseball. Boy, is he no joke with the lumber. 413 on base percentage, pacing the tour with nine home runs. Cut and a miss. Well placed, elevated heater from Dylan Porter and there's one away. Number seven, Michael Vitamin T. Dylan Porter getting ahead in that count there with Eric Jones Jr. and going with some high cheddar to get the whammer to chase there. Now to Michael Vitamin D. In his third world tour, it's been a mainstay in the three hole for the Nanders here this round. Hitting 326, a 399 on base percentage. The extra bases have been coming in excess as of late. As he lines that one into right center field, it's big time trouble. DR being waved around third. That is a walk off first inning two bagger from Michael Vitamin Deeb. His 14th walk off of the tour. Nanners lead by a point. And just not surprising at all, Michael Deeb now extends his hit streak to four games, and he has 11 runs batted in in his last six game twos. When you talk about the production you're getting from Michael Deeb, you see it a lot in those second games of series. Let's talk about all right, down to the field why go. Danny Hosley was the showman of the night in the Nanners' 4-3 win an evening ago. Yeah, that is exactly right, Biko. Danny Hosley coming away with the Showman Award here in this ball game. And you start here in the game action in the third inning, and Danny Hosley working another sprint. He's the Bananas leader. And now how about this? We're gonna get in on a little Hannah Montana action. It's a beautiful sight. That's
that's another great signature walk up from Danny Hosley and the boys with great choreography. And how about this blade appearance? Danny Hosley taking off and stealing first in the fifth inning. Now, that's not all. We get to the top of the fifth inning and Danny Hosley, he's going behind the back and making the snag. Danny Hosley making a lot of those trick plays in batting practice. He throws it out in a ball game for the first time on tour. And now here in the ninth, Hosley setting down Mike Pavasis with a strikeout. Justin Baber up, flies out to center field and Hosley would set the party animals down without scoring in the ninth inning. Come away with the win in the ball game as the Bananas would claim a four to three victory over the party animals. Another big performance for Haas. Here comes Major. And now the Nanners, a point up here this evening. He's taking a breather. Trying to set their Ten sights. Seconds left. Nine, eight, seven. On uh, the state of Alabama. Five, four, three, two. We have a winner, Major. And the silver medal goes to Ty James Sanby. Then is up a point to nil. Thanks to the now hit by pitch of DR Meadows, the steal of second, Thomas. and the first inning walk off double from Michael Vitamin Deeb. 4 5 6 for the party animals here in the top of the second. Tanner Thomas, returning man for the bad boys of Banana Land. The right fielder will lead it off. Dalton Cornette on deck. Chase Acuff in the hole. Cowboy Kyle was able to take care of Hampton, Bloomer, and Skull, three of the most dangerous hitters on this tour in short order. As Mr. Tinder Thomas, 2018 and 19 hey, banana, Field, we got any Swifties still has not gotten tonight? used to the first offering possibly being Let's right behind his keister. No, and Bill Roy really crept behind Tanner Thomas very well. One one from Cowboy Kyle. One tap towards second, Danny Hosley picking up his first trick play of the night. Our showman from Friday night is now a perfect 16 for 16 on the tour. Yeah, and he now owns uh, the highest success rate on trick plays on the tour this season. He's tied with Chase Aka, party animal shortstop, who is 19 nice for 19. Done. Now batting number three, Dalton. Good race going on between the two of them. As we get to the five hole and the catcher, Dalton Cornette. DC three in his second straight tour with the party animals. It's been superb, hitting 333, a 424 OBP. Hosley gets another try at it. Behind is back. Back-to-back -back trick plays for Haas. And the Bananas have done it on three of their five outs tonight. Yeah, how about that for the Bananas? Actually, four of their first five outs have come via the trick play variety. And the only other out in this ball game, a phenomenal diving catch by DR Meadows to start the ball game. We are seeing a defensive clinic for Savannah right now. And yeah, that is four trick plays on each of the last four outs. Chase Aka with a barrel down the left field line. It's gonna two hop the wall. Digging it out and firing it in is Deeb. And Acuff has his second double in as many nights. That is his 10th two bagger on the tour. First base runner for the party animals. And both of the pitches he's seen, he's done a great job turning on them and getting them down that left field line. Chase Acuff now, seven or eight of his 11 extra base hits have come in road games. He is whipping and nay-naying with the boys in celebration of being the first party animal to reach base safely. He's in scoring position with two outs for Breland Almodova, the left fielder. In his second world tour, the Stylin' Hawaiian, the pride of Honolulu, hitting 305, a 377 on base percentage. In his 12th year of professional baseball. Four of those were in the Arizona Diamondbacks organization. Heck of a weapon to have in your seven spot. And ahead of ball and no strikes. Kyle is your typical fastball. He'll throw four seam, two seam, and cutter. Slider and curveball mixed in. Quick pitching Breland. 
gets to the bottom of the zone. Count one and two. Cut and a miss. Nasty bender down and out. First strikeout for Cowboy Kyle. He strands a cuff on second. And what a beginning of this ball game for the sixth year banana. Yeah, both of his innings so far in this ball game have been under three minutes. A two minute and 52 second first for Kyle and now a two minute and 33 second second inning. Incredible stuff for a man to be close to averaging six minutes per frame. A lot of that affected by earlier on in this tour. And we will pop it back up into the broadcast booth. It is our second party animal of the night and the hero of a year ago here in Rickwood, Mr. Sean Fluke. Thank you so much for popping up. Good to be here, good to be here. Uh, we are at Rickwood, it's a little old stadium, comes with uh, no AC, it's a sauna in here. I don't know how you boys are gonna survive nine innings, but much uh, props to you guys for sure. Yeah, well, we're, we're baking up here, but we're on a great pace so far, so I feel pretty good about it. I mean, yeah. what does it mean to you to be back at the scene of the crime where you struck out the 11-year MLB man, Eric Burns, to win 3-2 to two in the last game between the Party Animals and Bananas on the 22 tour? Man, it feels good for sure. I believe I was walking back and forth as soon as we got here just screaming, where's Eric Burns? I need Burnsy. So it's definitely good to be back. I told uh, Baba. I'm like, dude, I gotta close this game out. It only makes sense to be the guy going the ninth, eighth, ninth inning. So, hopefully, we have another memorable moment here at Rickwood. So, it's gonna be a good time. So awesome. Do you feel like you're at the peak of your powers here? Like, is this is this a place that really has a special uh, spot in your heart now? Oh yeah, 100. percent To be able to share the mound with the guys that have stepped foot on that mound, I mean, it's just absolutely unbelievable. The things that's happened in this ballpark, I mean, it's just it's crazy, man. It's good to be a part of it, and hopefully, we have uh, same success as we did last time. I mean, there's so many interesting things about Rickwood Field once you come and experience it. You talk about that original wall past the current outfield wall yep. and a lot of other things. Do you have a favorite aspect of this ballpark, Sean? Oh, favorite aspect? Probably just the seating. It's in general, just how it goes way up. I mean, this place is absolutely packed. It is unbelievable here. The five-year banana, Mr. Dan Oberst, 2021. Coastal Plain League champion when he was one of the best hitters on uh, that squad. This is a guy, I say a prayer every time he steps in the box, this man. Yeah, he's still one of the best hitters in Banana Land, leading the Nanners with his 374 batting average, 442 on base percentage, 1038 OPS. He is a menacing man in the box. Hit 440 to pace all batters last year. And it's 456. The Nanners EH starting it off. McFadden on deck, Olsen in the hole. Oh, got him on the outside corner. Yeah, that was a beautiful fastball from Dylan Porter for a second strikeout of the night. Number 24, Dakota D. McFadden. Now the aforementioned Dakota McFadden in his third world tour. The designated hitter hitting 297. Fifth overall with his 559 slugging percentage. Oh, that's a chalk fence. <laughs> Pretty similar pitch to the one Porter just nabbed Oberst on. And Dylan going back to the well does not get the call this time. Oh. And the bender, good tunneling from the man out of Oakland, California. Facing off against the Rocky Point, North Carolina native, oh. Dakota McFadden drives that one deep to left. You can kiss it goodbye. Oh my. Dakota McFadden with his tour high 17th walk off. It's his eighth bomb overall. And the Nanners are up two points to zip. I don't even think I've seen that ball come down. <laughs> I never <laughs> saw it land either, Fluky. It just <laughs> drifted off. Oh man. Into the land of good and plenty. Have off this 
Well, his family must be in the ballpark because that guy goes bridge just about every time his family's there. Sean, you won't believe it. Before the ball game, I ran into Dakota McFadden's father, got to shake his hand, and now his family has the pleasure of seeing their son grab a four baser in this ball game. And that, that ball, I think, might have went over that original fence out there. Honestly, that ball was absolutely smoked. The original fence that is 470 feet from home plate in left field. That was a no-doubter either way. Over, it's a 399-foot fence in left center. And now Maceo and the boys boogieing as we head to the third inning. We'll, we will be back with Sean Fluke once the boys are done dancing. Amazing job there by Maceo with the help of DJ the Invader, Tucker Perry, Jake Lealios, Malachi Mitchell, Alex Ziegler, Vinny DeRubius, Colin Ledbetter. Takes an army out there. Boys get it done, and boy is it great to see the mullet shake back in action. Joe Lytle with First game back in the lineup since night one in Nashville. At the start of the month. We're seeing some jammed fingers that occurred in a play at the plate with DR Meadows sliding in head first. It was the first challenge actually in banana ball history. Lytle able to get the out. Man out of Oklahoma City who spent four years collegiately at Oklahoma City University. Playing under his dad. And taps that one to EJ. Under the leg to Kyle Lewis on a hop. That is the seventh trick play in eight tries for Eric Jones Jr. He has now got them in back-to-back -back nights. And we just continue to see Eric Jones get stronger and stronger at the first base position. Whether it's in the trick play department or just making other plays, including one where he laid out and made a sweet grab last night. Now it's Jason Swan, the designated hitter for the party animals. 8-9-10 here in the top of the third inning. Justin Baber on deck. Swanee trying to get something going for the boys in black and pink. He fouls that puppy off. Five-year man out of Georgia Southern, hailing from Jacksonville, Florida. And Kyle Lewis is going to bring the boys in. Osley, Cox, and Meadows join him for a choreographed boogie. Shaking their derrieres. We have Jackson and EJ doing their own little shimmy over there at the first and third base corner. Yeah, off camera, good to see them taking part in the fun as that one misses a pinch high, according to Vincent Chapman, who continues to dance behind the dish. Fluky, before we let you go so you can escape the sauna that is our press box, you have really been successful as of late. Has there been anything that you've really found that has been powering that success as Swan flies that one out to the track, tumbling snag, added for dramatic effect by Noah Bridges? Yeah, man, I've just been uh, getting ahead of counts lately. Well, a lot less walks. I mean, started off walking people a lot. My dad's been getting on me, so I had to uh, <laughs> change that up a little bit. Uh, we changed the grip on the slider, and that was by my worst pitch, and now it's almost more, gets thrown more than the curveball, so. It's definitely breaking a lot. I mean, I heard you last night with the spin rate. I mean, through the roof, but it's definitely good to see. And just having control of all the pitches again is definitely helping me out. Yes, for anybody wondering, anything north of 2,500 on a breaking ball and spin rate is pretty elite stuff, and Fluky was living there on living, the bender. Baby. That's what you love to see. Living. 
And Fluke, you're also working very quickly this season. You're second among all qualified pitchers in average MPI, three minutes and 43 seconds. I mean, what's helped you be so successful in working quickly out there on the mound? Uh, I just fill in the zone, man. I mean, just making them. I like. I don't have many strikeouts, which sucks being the proclaimed <laughs> strikeout king. Correct. So, I mean, I hate that I came up with that because it's not working out for me. But, <laughs> you know, just making them put the, ball, the bat on the ball and just getting outs. They go two pitch coming to Dustin Baber. That Ooh. one gets the bottom of the zone. Vincent Chapman with a generous call for Cowboy Kyle. And a one, two, three frame here in the top of the third. And the Nanners have a chance to walk off their third straight frame with just one run here in the bottom of the third. As Kyle and Bill perform a beautiful choreographed strikeout celebration. Lip syncing and taking to the skies. Sean Fluke, before you sweat all you can tonight, because I know you're gonna be doing it a whole ton on the mound as well. After two scoreless innings last night, really right, fired up to see you dominating go, again in Birmingham. Can't tell you how much we appreciate Brooke you coming Russell. up and joining Take us. It it yeah, of course, man. It's always a pleasure. I do have one thing to say before I go. Eric Burns, if you're at home watching this, I want you back in Banana Land, man. You are mine, I have your number, and we need to run it back. Burnsy, I'll see you soon, baby. <laughs> There goes the exterminator, Sean Fluke. And we'll throw it down to the young professor as it's time for a dizzy kiss off. We'll see how this goes. All right, first up, we've got Derek and Sheree, four heads down on the back. On your marks, get set, go. One, two, three. Sheree, you gotta go faster. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sprint to each other, let's see that kiss. Easy, easy, Derek. <laughs> Very gingerly. <laughs> All right, this, I could have been better, I don't know. All right, Chris and Courtney, heads down on the back. On your marks, get set, go, 10 seconds. Go, 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 fast, fast, fast. Faster, faster, faster. We got to roll. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go, kiss, go. Courtney doesn't know where she is. <laughs> That was, that was pretty good. All right, we've got Paul and Amy. Get on the bat, score four heads down. Here we go. On your marks, get set, let's spin hard, spin hard. Paul's going, Amy's going. They're moving faster. Hang on to that hat, Amy. And five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, go. Find yourself, find yourself. Paul, oh, Paul goes down. Oh, no. <laughs> and, oh my goodness, there it is. How did we? <laughs> All right. Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, it's a no contest. Paul and Amy are the winners. Now batting number eight, Jackson Olsen. Boy, if it was hot in the press box earlier, Jackson Olsen turning up the temperature here, bounces that one off the wall, and it is a well-struck single as a howitzer in from Tanner Thomas to keep Jackson with just one bag as he is pinch run for by Malachi Flash the Kid Mitchell. Yeah, that ball had some real hair on it off the bat of Jackson Olsen, but a nice ricochet off that right field wall. Tanner Thomas, of course, a great arm, able to hold Jackson to a single, but the Bananas in a great position, pinch running Malachi here. He has a chance to get them in scoring position very quickly. Malachi, the tour leader in stolen bases. As that one on a hop bounces off of Chase Acuff to Dustin Baber. Throw to first is erratic. Now Coxie trying to get to second. Jake Skoll hurls it there. And Ryan retreats back to first ahead of the tag from Dylan Porter. That was as wild of a play as I think we've seen in the entirety of the 47 plus games on this tour. Yeah, and. Give Ryan Cox some credit there. A very smart decision Ladies to get back to the first base back there. First base coach, his name is Maceo. So Coxie will replace Olsen on what goes in the book as a 6-4 fielder's choice. Get those hands together. Because the booted ball from Acuff scooped up by Baber. Number one. No error from Dustin as Cox didn't get to advance the bag on the overthrow. And with one down, it'll be Bill Leroy, one of the twin princes of Banana Land, just like Cowboy Kyle. 
his starting pitcher in his sixth campaign. As a nanner pops that one foul and out of the stadium. Comes in hitting 277, a 373 on base percentage. Very respectable numbers for such a dependable defensive catcher. Behind 0-2 in the count. We've seen the production dip a little bit for Bill here in the month of June, batting just 167. But what's interesting, he has still found a way to reach base safely in 10 of his last 13 games, a lot of them due to his ball four sprints. He's very good at drawing sprints for the Bananas. 14 sprints compared to a Torlo seven strikeouts. There's one thing he's gonna do, he'll put the ball in play. Two to one ratio on ball four sprints to K's. His second best overall, only Dalton Cornett is better in that department as the heater just misses the outside corner. Dylan Porter vehemently disagrees with Vincent Chapman's call on that pitch. No track man in our 113 year old stadium here. So you can field your own opinions on what your eyeballs tell your brain. Big payoff pitch coming. Cox off for second and it's ball four. It's, a ball four it's our first sprint of the night as the party animals get it around the infield awful quickly. Ball scampered away from Tanner Thomas as he got the feed from Reese Hampton but he gets it to Breeland, the seventh and final man who had to touch it. Cox gets two bases, he's at third. And Bill over at first base, runners on the corners with one away for Danny Hosley. Yeah, and Cox wisely took off on that 3-2 pitch but was not able to come around and score. He had a feeling with the jump that Cox had, he might be able to get sent home and score another inning winning run for the Bananas. But Tyler Gillum with a hold here at third base, he's gonna put this inning in the hands of yet another patient batter in Danny Hosley. Hosley the Nanners team leader in sprints with 18 of them. Picked up one last night, as well as a steal of first base, reached two out of his three times up. Lifts that one to left center, Reese Hampton behind it. Cox tagging from third, the throw from Hampton up the left field line. And that is three innings, three walk-offs for the Nanners. Hosley grabs his 16th of the tour. One behind Dakota McFadden for the season high. And it's three points to nothing. About the choreography on the walk-off celebration right there as the boys truly break out. Please welcome down the third base into a raucous roar as they've gotten three points in three innings of play. Yeah, and this really isn't surprising for a Bananas offense that has been rolling in the month of June. They came into today's game batting 342 in the month of June. 43 runs scored, 65 hits, 22 of which have been extra base hits. And they have more sprints than strikeouts here in the month of June. That is always a fantastic sign for an offense. Michael Deeb, Dakota McFadden, and Danny Hosley. The heroes early on tonight as Cowboy Kyle Lewis with his second start in as many years here in historic Rickwood Field. Now facing the top of the order as we head to the top of the fourth inning. He is only allowed a double to Chase Acuff in the second with two outs. Besides that, he's retired. The other nine party animals he's faced. And all three innings from Kyle tonight have been below three minutes. So you talk about great MPIs. Kyle Lewix, he is making his money out there on the mound with some low MPIs in this ball game. Congratulations on winning states as the Banana Band parades through the stands. Jesse Cole in his traditional jubile spirits. Saw a great Danny Hosley sign earlier tonight, just before he 
Notched that walk-off sack fly, grabbed his 25th stake on the tour. As Coxie scored his 19th run. And the party animals have not taken the field here. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for your Bananas Texas. It'll be fascinating to see how they go out there defensively here for the... Now batting for the party animals, number six, Reese Hampton. The top of the fourth inning, Hampton coming up to the dish. But where are the Bananas defensively? We've got a foul ball that lodged in the fence at the back of the grandstand. Looks like the Nanners are all off the first baseline. Hampton's ready to hit. But all the Bananas fielders are parading down the stands. And here they are, after performing a little Britney Spears lip sync. I was worried our game was glitching again, Biko, but uh, <laughs> thank goodness that uh, the guys found their way down onto the field here. Kyle's getting after it. Reese Hampton tries to flick that ball towards a vacated left field. Coxie now just getting to short, and Kyle able to steal a strike. Hampton had a looping liner towards center his first time. D.R. Meadows with a diving catch to rob him of a base knock. Currently on a one game hitting streak after his all time banana ball record 26 game hitting streak was ended a Saturday ago and he's plunked by the Lewicks fastball. Lead off man on here in the top of the fourth for the animals. And that is definitely not what Kyle Lewis wanted to start this fourth inning, especially with a speedy runner, an aggressive runner in Reese Hampton. He'll have to watch him very carefully on the base pass as he might try and steal second and get in the scoring position here. And get the party animals on the board in this ball game. Only the third hit batter, and now 100 and a third innings pitched for Kyle Lewis on the tour. Gets ahead of Bryson Bloomer, who flew out to center. DR Meadows catching that one while backflipping. Vincent Chapman calls time, dusts off the plate for a heartbeat. And now bouncing around. A joyous dance to some Taylor Swift. And the vibe completely changes. He throws about all of his umpiring articles away and focusing on shaking that took us a Ladies hit. and gentlemen, make some noise for our dancing umpire. His name is Vincent Chapman. Now last night, Trackman picked up Vincent's throw of the mask at 78 miles an hour. It did. Now my question for you, my good friend, is using your patented Biko Scala IDAR 3000, what was the miles per hour on that throw of the mask? I had that one at 81. Grabbed a couple MPHs between last night and this evening. He's been in the hotel gym. Right, with Danny Hosley and his girlfriend, Reese Hampton fakes a steal. Fastball is up, 1-1 one, one count on the Boomer. Tour leader in RBIs with 36. Hitting 366, a 447 on base percentage. As he lost that one to shallow right, Bridges started back now, comes diving in to make a great catch for the first out here in the top of the fourth. Number one, Jake Skull. Started with a bad jump, but what a recovery from the man out of Four Oaks, North Carolina. Yeah, we continue to see him navigate the corner outfield for the positions magnificently for the Bananas. And yet again, even though, like you said, he had a bad jump on that ball, able to just go full extension and make a sweet grab and get Kyle Lewix another out here against Bryson Bloomer. Randy Voss is calling Reese Hampton safe. Nanners try to hit in ball trick, but Kyle Lewis was still on the dirt on the mound, so it was illegal. Hampton takes off for second throw from Bill Leroy. In time! Reggie Liggins out there with the call. 
And Hampton thrown out, stealing for only the fourth time in 19 tries on the tour. Yeah, very rare that you see Reese Hampton caught stealing, but that was a near perfect throw from Billaroy and Ryan Cox, an excellent job covering the bag and applying that tag. Now two outs and Kyle, well, not actually going to be able to finish this inning in under three minutes yet again, but could get out of this in less than three and a half. Jake Skull grounded out to third his first time, although that was on the first base side of second, and now he's gonna steal first. Second time he's done it on the tour as a wild pitch from Lewigs bounces towards the third base side of what is an 82-foot back backstop, rather. Whole lot of real estate in between Bill Leroy and the fence behind home. Yeah, and if you were a wagering man, which, by the way, there's no betting in this ballpark, Pico. Correct. So you better watch what you do around here, man. They've got signs about that. Uh, but a wagering man would have been very wise to have betted on a steal of first in this ball game, especially with that large backstop, like you said. Skull only the third base runner of the night for the party animals. Tanner Thomas now coming up to the dish four, with some Tanner, clean blasting. You understand Thomas. why Fat Bottom Girls was the song of choice here. That is an outrageous badonkadonk. And Tanner Thomas just continues to collect more and more hits. The larger that badonkadonk becomes, I'll tell you that much. Took Jared Donaldson about 450 feet out to right center in Grayson Stadium. The first time he ever had an at-bat with a pillow in his pants. And boy, has it become a fun event in Banana Land. It's a Chapman stealing a squeeze of that keister. Tanner grounded out to second his first time. Skull takes off, throw from Leroy, not in time, never had a chance. Excellent jump from Jake Skull, who's now eight for nine in his stolen base tries. Another stolen base for the party animals. The animals have their second runner in scoring position of the ball game. And Tanner Thomas lifts that one in the infield. Homer in an elevator shaft. Ryan Cox on the mound, makes the call, tumbling down, makes the catch. Merry Christmas, and four everybody. shutout frames for Cowboy oh, Kyle Lewis. Jesse Cole, this place is electric. Once again, gives the Nanners a chance to win notch. an inning with just yes. one run scored. Right, Kyle Lewis just, just continues to pick up where he left off in his last start against the party animals, finishing this inning in four feet. minutes and 33 seconds. We are gonna rock this place. With a little hay it's time for Hey Baby here in Rickwood Field. The oldest baseball stadium still standing in the United States of America. Birmingham Barons played here for the better part of the time between 1910 and 1987. Couple breaks in there. The Birmingham A's were the primary Ooh. resident from 67 through 75. And the Birmingham Black Barons played from 1920 to 1960 in the Negro League, took home four championships throughout their tenure. The majority of the greatest baseball players of all time have showcased their talents here in Rickwood. Boy, is it special to see it jam-packed with far more than 10,000 Bananiacs this place to life once again. It's an unreal experience to be here. I've just got to tell you, I have rarely gotten so emotional walking into a ballpark, but, but being here this morning just really made me recognize just how special the game of baseball is, how influential it is on our culture, and just how we've come to adopt this sport that we call banana ball as well. Well, baseball and banana ball are the most, most important things in our lives. They are our livelihoods, literally. Made me cry in Tampa earlier on the tour. Thinking about the last time I was in George M. Steinbrenner Field with my late grandpa, Mike. Now you have shed tears here in Rickwood. When are we gonna get now the coordinating producer, Chad Reese, to cry? 
Uh, I'm going to try it at the Kurt Vonnegut Museum in Indianapolis. <laughs> okay, so next weekend, we'll see if we could get our darling Chad Reese to shed some tears. Bucket list event for us to occur here on the 2023 tour. Peter outside to Noah Bridges. Bottom of the order trying to feed the top here for the Bananas. The right fielder in the 10 hole. DR Meadows on deck. Eric Jones Jr. in the Ladies hole. Dylan Porter, time, not a huge fan of either of the first two first calls there from Vincent, but both look outside to my trained eye. That one yanked inside. We mentioned earlier today on the pregame that Dylan Porter has become the party animal's ace across his last five starts. 19 and two third innings pitched, just five earned runs, a 2.29 ERA in that time. And as he's battled back into this count, now it's full at three and two. But he's been as dependable as anybody when it comes to arms for the party animals, he it does lose Bridge Noah Bridges, no one can go as who is as fast as you are legally allowed to make a human being, and he's going to be able to get to second base before the party animals get it to all seven fielders behind the pitcher and catcher. Nearly ran all the way past the bag as he was able to make an about face and get back to second safely. Yeah, that was a scary play for a second there for Noah Bridges, but able to dive back to the base safely. And talking about Dylan Porter, again, this does feel like a departure from what we've seen over the last two months. And really, I think it's the control more than anything that Porter is struggling with, with two sprints now and a hit by pitch. Bouncer to Dustin Baber, who gets the sure out at first. Not trying anything crazy with the inning winning run, now moving up to third base, just 90 feet away with one out. And Eric Jones Jr., a strikeout victim his first time, will swing it. ER had been an example of Dylan Porter's uncharacteristic lack of control. He was hit by a pitch his first time, scored the inning winning run in the first. Porter has now given up sprints and back to back frames. 1 1 count on the Bananas' first baseman. Dylan had only allowed seven sprints across his last five starts. A lot of room in foul territory. Dalton Cornett makes the snag. Acuff heads up play going from short to cover home as Bridges stays at third and there are now two outs. That's got to be a frustrating at bat for Eric Jones, especially when you look at the foul ground here in Rick Woodfield and a lot of other ballparks that lands in the stands and possibly is caught by a fan for an out. But here, Dalton Cornett does a great job navigating towards the Bananas dugout and still coming up with the snag that could get Dylan Porter out of this fourth inning unscathed. He has to get by Michael Vitamin Deeb. Walked off the first inning on a double to the right center field wall. As Deep took the words right out of my mouth his first time around, the extra base hits have been coming at an extreme pace as of late. Lines that one into left center, and he's done it again. Second walk off of the night for Vitamin Deeb, his 15th of the tour. Manners are skunking the party animals four points to nil. How about this? Michael Deeb, his seventh extra base hit in the month of June. And what's more, the 400th hit on the season for the Savannah Bananas. And they are securely in the catbird seat in this ball game. June has been a magical month for the Nanners. It's tough being a family. It's tough they are cruising a here in together. round two in Rickwood Field. We'll throw it down to the young professor. Time for some family here. baggage as we head to, to the fifth frame. They're going to need to keep their families together. They're going to need to go and pick up a kid at first base, their second kid at second base, their wife at third base, and make it all the way home. I've got the Shirley family and the poor family. They're not poor, that's just their last name. He gets this all the time. But the Shirley family and the poor family, you guys ready? Then dads, on your mark, get set, go! Family 
baggage is off. The Shirley family is off to an early lead. The kids are getting terrified. He's trying to help out my man. He's cutting the bases, but we'll allow it. The Shirley family in the lead. The whole family has stability. He's ready. He's got the kid on the back. Moore family has to get in each arm over the shoulders. Now, here's where things get interesting. Mom has to get on, too. So here we go. We're regrouping. Shirley family is on. Oh, no, he's trying to go through on the back. But the poor family has everyone. And here they go. Wait. They're coming down the line. They're regrouping. Everyone's getting it together. I told you it's hard being a family these days. They're ready to make it happen. Teamwork makes the dream work. Mom's going. Here comes the Shirley family. The poor family is hanging on. I'm impressed no matter what happens. But ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the Shirley family. But make some noise for the poor family keeping it together here in Banana Land. Was amazing. There was a collapse there on the final leg of family baggage. Some of the kids shaking up. Josh, not the only boy who has cried today Number now here at Rickwood Field. Animals, but it looks like everybody not too much worse for wear. Yeah, we're crying about two different things. I'm <laughs> just happy you know, buddy, okay? <laughs> oh, man. This thing has been all bananas. Four innings in the books, five to go. With more than an hour still on our clock. Yeah, already in the fifth inning and one hour and seven seconds still on the clock is Dalton Cornett with a great line drive piece of opposite field hitting. And you talk about how you get a fast banana ball game. Well, we're seeing it here in this ball game for two reasons. Kyle Lewick's three of his four innings have been under three minutes and the bananas with walk-offs in every inning so far. That's the recipe. That's why you have seen the fastest game of all time being a challenger game. Nanners destroying the Southern Maryland Blue Crab seven points to nothing this previous Monday. And two of the other top four the Nanners against the Major League Baseball Players Alumni Association, and the Nanners against the Florence Yalls. It's when they can rack up those walk-offs, and pitchers can baffle hitters who are talented, but are not the heavy swinging boys that the party animals employ. As Chase Acuff, a double his first time, sends that one to DR Meadows, and there is one away here in the top of the fifth. Acuff one for two on the night. That is now the sixth flyout we've seen Kyle Lewicks induce in this ball game. Now, why is the flyout statistic so interesting? Well, coming into Kyle Lewicks' last start, where he went seven against the party animals, he had only gotten 11 flyouts in the month of June, but in that game alone, 14 flyouts from Kyle Lewicks and already six in this ball game. We could see him reach double digits once again. Incredibly fascinating as he gets a cut and a miss on his slider. Breland fouls that off. Party Animals left fielder quickly behind. No balls and two strikes. First man to strike out against Kyle on the evening. Cornette, five for eight in stolen base attempts. Not the fastest man the Party Animals employ, but he's a savvy base runner. Vincent Chapman boogieing behind the dish. Thinking about splishing, splashing, and taking a bath. Reeling, battling at the dish. Fans hooting and hollering, surprised at the remix that Shark has now blessed their ears with. Mr. 
Lewix has been cruising tonight. Second inning in a row, he's let the leadoff man reach. That one tapped to short, Cox flips to second, Hosley over to first, not in time. 6-4 fielder's choice and there are two outs. It was a great start to that possible double play that ended up not becoming a double play there for the Bananas. But really what made that play tricky was Hosley having to go over, cover the bag, and throw cross body. And that combination just not able to beat Breland Almodova barreling down the line. Party Animals trying to catch fire at the dish on a scorching Evening here in Birmingham, Alabama. 90 degrees at first pitch. Still 89 here in the top of the fifth. Joe Ladle in his first game back. Now with the 1-1 count on him, grounded out to first his first time. He was scorching hot. Started swinging a great bat in Las Vegas when he took Dakota Stilts Albright in deep as that one's stroke foul. And then he had as good a weekend as he could possibly have in his home state of Oklahoma, was cruising into Nashville, jammed those fingers on the Meadows play at home, and has taken a few weeks to recover. Collected half of his runs batted in of 10. He had five runs batted in across three games in Oklahoma. And Joe Lytle, unfortunately, because he had to leave the game on June the 2nd, snapped a six game hitting streak. Ryan Cox between the legs behind second base. Retires Lytle across the diamond. Breland was running on the pitch. He gets to second, but it doesn't matter because Cowboy Kyle Lewix has five shutout frames in the books and strands the leadoff single. As the fans go crazy here in the Magic City, it is Hot Dog O'Clock. We tried him in Regions Field last night. See if we can break open some mustard. I know you like a naked bite. I mean, maybe I'll join you. It's I, I think it's it's smart of you to just, there you go, you're already digging into it. It's, it's smart to just take one plain bite before you try any condiments. It feels sacrilegious to me. Oh, oh, wow. It's a pretty good dog there. Off the jump. And this is no disrespect to the region's field dog, but this Rickwood dog, uh, far supreme in my eyes, a little more girth to this one. Mm -hmm. I really like the bun feel as well. I mean, this is a solid dog, good char as well. I gotta give credit to the char here. They have been cooking these hot dogs all morning. I mean, since the rooster crowed. Hmm. That's a 9.2 hot dog for me. There is not much better you can do. I love the girth comment that you had. As you can see, the bun, a little fluffier than Regions Field, which I gave an eight last night. And then the dog has a lot of taste to it. I mean, just a beautiful pillowy texture covering this dog. I'm loving everything I'm eating right now. I think I'm going to go even higher than you. I wow. think I'm giving this thing a 9.5 on the hot dog scale. Wow. Very, very close to a Trump dog. That is one delicious wiener. Four, five, and six for the Nanners here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Dylan Porter back out on the bump. Excellent snag there by Dalton Cornett to prevent Dan Obers from stealing first base. He's already done it twice on the tour. Bananas have walked off four innings and four opportunities tonight. And they have four, five, six. Oberst, McFadden, and Olsen. That's a cut and a miss on a well-located heater. Just about a carbon copy of the fastball that Dan struck out on his first time. Dalton Malden out coaching third base, playing his guitar. 
Mountains, a beautiful slider, looked like the heater, and then danced out of the zone. And did not bite. 59 minutes left on the clock as the 3-2 comes in. And the inning winning run is aboard. Mr. Oberst gonna test the party animal sprint defense. Hampton to Thomas and Almadova. And Dan was already safe at second before the final two outfielders had to touch that thing. We're seeing a lot of patience from Dan Obers here in B Birmingham. That's his fourth sprint of the series. And how about this, last night alone, again, three sprints in game one. That made up a quarter of his total sprints on the season entering tonight, today's game. Dylan Porter had a 2.29 ERA across his last five starts, nearly 20 innings pitched in total. Boy, has this changed the tides of an earned run average that was dipping. Dan thought he had Porter timed up. Ball to flex off of Baber's so glove, but Oberst no chance to advance a bag. Really if you know the For an extra hitter who is playing first base if he's not getting the half night off. Dan is a terror on the base pads. 25 for 28 in his stolen base attempts. And we saw just how smart of a base runner he was last night, where again, he reached, tied the game on a sprint in the ninth inning. And then with Dakota McBadden up at the plate on the first pitch, Dan deciding to take off and steal third base, something you do not typically see, especially in a late game situation like that. But Tyler Gillum trusted his extra hitter, Dan Oberst, and you could just see them high-fiving, fist pumping after that. Absolutely it was a great moment for the job. both of them. D-Max smashed a no-doubt homer his last time, walked off the second inning. It was the first long ball for the Nanners since Dan Oberst, the man occupying second base, hit an eighth inning walk off Apo Taco in Tulsa. That ball lifted to center, Hampton back pedals. Goes under his leg to grab it, throws it to third, not in time to get Dan Oberst to his in standing. And the inning winning run 90 feet away with one out. Excellent trick play, Hampton now seven for 14 on the tour. Yeah, Reese Hampton has now converted each of his last three trick plays successfully, and he's actually had three consecutive games now where he's recorded a trick play. A nice little streak for Reese Lightning. Party Animals have to bring the infield in for Jackson Olsen, who smacked a one-hopper off the right field wall for a single his first time. It was the only pitch he had seen tonight as the heater is in a bit high. You talk about seeing a very minimal amount of pitches for Jackson Olsen. He is only seeing two and a half pitches per plate appearance here in the month of June. He's had a very aggressive approach, but boy, it has paid off for him. He's batted 320, and he's had a hit in every game but one here in the month of June. In fact, I was starting to think our broadcaster's jinx wasn't very much of a thing here in Banana Ball. But uh, within the past four games, we have jinxed Reese Hampton, Dan Obers, and Jackson also. Sorry, guys. I mean, we're paid to talk about these things. What are we supposed to do? Just not mention when guys are making banana ball history? We're just trying to make them sound good, you know? Jackson had a 16-game hitting streak. It was the active leader going into last night's game when he had an over, naturally. And I had mentioned the streak a couple times. Dylan Porter, one bad one away giving the Bananas their fifth point in as many innings tonight. Gotta come after the greatest showman. The man out of New Milford, Connecticut. who spent four years at the University of Hartford and finished up at Stetson. And he will take that one down and away. Porter stomping off the mound as Mr. Ober scores. Jackson grabs his 12th walk off of the tour and the Nanners continue to roll here in the rematch at Rickwood. And how about this? Jackson Olsen drawing a ball four sprint here. That's the first sprint he's drawn since April 21st against the Charleston Dirty Birds. He's just been seeing the ball so well and putting good lumber on the ball. He's gotten a lot of base hits. He hasn't needed to necessarily draw sprints. And there you see him get one at long last. Here is Jesse Cole. Major League All-Star and World Series pitcher and Red Sox Hall of Famer, 76 years young. Let's hear it for Bill, the Spaceman Lee. This 
This is a fascinating development. The 14-year MLB vet, Red Sox Hall of Famer, Bill the Spaceman Lee is going to get a full top of the sixth inning here after Cowboy Kyle absolutely dominates through five scoreless. Nobody we'd rather talk to in such a pivotal moment in this ball game than the man in the yellow tux, owner of the Savannah Bananas, Mr. Jesse Cole. How about Bill Lee coming in for a full inning in the United States of America's oldest ballpark? With the history of this ballpark and the history of, I think, America's most traveled baseball player in history, he <laughs> deserves a full inning. And after Kyle's masterful five innings and the trick plays and the way this game's going, might as well go all in and get Bill Lee a full inning. Now with Major League Baseball just announcing that the Field of Dreams game will be here next year, how special is it that we get to be here for a second time in as many years and this place is sold out once again? You know, when we first heard about this place last year and the history behind it and all the Hall of Famers that played here, and we knew it was a no-brainer to give it a shot and see if we could bring Banana Ball to the oldest ballpark in America. And to see that now Major League Baseball is going to put on a great event next year, it's special. But I'll tell you, they're going to have a lot of work to top this night so far because this has been epic so far in Banana Ball. Well, as was last night, how about 16 trick plays, the single game record, plus you have DJ the Invader throwing a minute 20 inning, the, the second fastest of all time. How about that? These guys have come so far with Banana Ball. The trick plays, the speed of game, it's unbelievable to watch. Now they're using the old gloves from the 19. 30s and 40s. I mean, this is just a joy, and it's as an owner of this, it's a pleasure. I can't wait to see what's next. Thanks so much for joining us, Jesse. Thanks. Love you, Biko. Love you too, Jess. There goes the man in the yellow tux, owner and creator of the circus surrounding the game that is Banana Ball and Savannah Bananas Entertainment, alongside his wife Emily Cole. Jason Swan flies this in foul territory. Jackson Olson battles the demons he has faced. Uh, an elevator Number shaft three, homers three, on this tour and also battling that star in the sky that heats our earth here. Yeah, and the Bananas have only played one game during the day all tour. It came early in Jacksonville. So this is a territory that a lot of these guys are having to navigate uh, just because they haven't gotten used to playing in a lot of day games. The clock has just ticked 6, 11 p.m. here in the ham. And the sun is blaring down on Rickwood, as powerful as ever, as Bill Lee barks serious, at Vincent Chapman. Thought that one got the knees against Dustin right Baber. Can I get a Nine, ten, and one for the party animals here in the Thank top you. of the sixth inning. Baber struck out looking. One of two Ks on Cowboy Kyle's incredibly efficient five scoreless frames. One fair down the third base line. Babes is going to coast into second with a stand-up double. Only the third hit of the night for the party animals. As they grab their fifth base runner. And a rare pull side hit for Dustin Baber. In fact, only the eighth hit that Dustin Baber has pulled the left field this season. In fact, he entered today with more hits to the opposite field than he had to the pool side. Now he's even at eight apiece. That's out of 30 hits overall on the tour. Guy who uses every part of the field magnificently. Now Reese Hampton lines it to a scoop. Danny Hosley looks Baber back to the bag. Hampton barely got out of the batter's box. He homered off of Bill Lee in Las Vegas. Had an infield single off of him his last time. That one was well struck, but straight to the Nanners second baseman. Yeah, just perfect positioning there for Danny Hosley, who continues to just do great things, whether he's at second base or right field. Now Bryson Bloomer, which is that one, grab the top of the zone. Looks like our center field camera currently on the fritz, so you get the high home angle as this one is dunked. Into right field, Noah Bridges unable to come up with a diving attempt, and that allows Dustin Baber to score from yes. second pretty easily. Yes. 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 Bloomer with his yes. tour leading 37th yes. run batted in, and the party yes. animals on the board for the yes. first time tonight. Yes. Yes. Number one, Jake Skull. Bryson Bloomer just able to get a little timber on that ball. 
And uh, a Texas leaguer falling into right field will break up the shutout for the Bananas in this ball game. We can still keep the Daners off the board in the all-important points category. Currently, they'll need one run in the bottom of the sixth to do that. They have scored one run in each of the first five innings tonight. Now Jake Skoll, the ever-dangerous man in the three-hole. Bill Leroy in pursuit of this. A fan's going to have to make a play, and they come up empty. Skoll grounded out his first time. Stole first base, and then swiped second as well in his most recent trip to the dish. And with the way that is scored in banana ball, that gives Jake Skull two stolen bases in tonight's ball game. Gets him up to nine for 10 on the tour. Two of those steals at first. Slider drifts out of the zone. Lee working quickly. This one popped behind home plate. This time Bill Leroy barely has to move, throws away his glove, bare hands it for his fourth trick play of the tour. All right, down and Bill to Lee the field only allows the one run out, my friend, the young on two hits, Take it away. strands That's a man, right, ladies and, gentlemen, and the Nanners will need one to, to tie the sixth, two runs to win it. That was a perfect do drop out of the hand of Bill Lee there. there. Just a slow pitch, Jake Skulls getting underneath that. And how about Bill Leroy? We saw him make that play in the rained out game against the Aussie Drop Bears. Here he pulls out another great barehanded snag behind the plate. That is not easy, especially considering you have to throw away that catcher's face mask and everything else. It is also not easy to belly dance. We'll see how our three contestants can perform. Good start already. We'll throw it down to the young professor. His belly matches his shirt, so let's see what you got, Cliff. Oh, he's shaking. Listen to that. Clip is pretty good. That's pretty solid, Clip. All right, last but not least, we got Ricky. Ricky, let's see what you got in. Oh my goodness, Ricky. You gotta shake that belly, brother. Let's see it. Wow. It's very slow. Oh. Wow. If we had this in high depth, it'd be a different kind of show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you gotta pick the winners. How do we feel about Eugene? How about Cliff? And he's still dancing. How do we feel about Ricky? There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Your winner, the best belly dancer we got. It's Ricky. Ladies and gentlemen, now batting for your Savannah Bananas, he is our resident bat trickster. Give it up for Alex Ziggy Ziegler. Ziggy will pinch it as Jake Lee Alios, the new man on the mound. Ziegler coming out with his slightly oversized piece of lumber. Currently 0 for 3 on the tour with it. But hitting 100%, or hitting 1,000 rather, however you want to say it, on the trick plays with his Mondo barrel. Ahead 1-0. As the man out of Pomona College, handling from Tucson, Arizona, takes over on the bump. And Ziggy pops that one out of the stadium. That one lifted into shallow center. Chase Acuff will grab the can of corn. And Ziggy now 0 for 4 on the tour with his big bat. Just when Ladies you thought that ball might drift into the, the outfield and land for a hit. Theater. Unfortunately, Chase Acuff able to roam out there. Make an easy play on that. Slight hit. And from Ziggy, we go to stilts here. The sixth inning going off the rails as the Nanners trail by a run. But with a five-point lead, I think Jesse Cole, Adam Byron, Tyler Gillum and company think it's high time to fool around. Dakota is no stranger to Jake Lee Alios. And now we're going to have our 6-2-2 with stilts at the dish. Lee Alios has Acuff, Baber, and Hampton dancing with him. These guys shaking it, clapping it, whipping their bodies around, jumping, leaping left and right. 
And now the offering. Popped in foul territory. Not caught by fans. Dakota five for 15 on the tour, hitting 333. Sends another pop behind the dish. That one lands safely on top of the netting. One two count from Lealios. He struck out Dakota back in West Palm Beach. Oh so long ago. Doesn't get the call on that one. Vincent Chapman saying it's below wherever stilts his knees are. Now the count full at three and two. Party Animals outfielders are all incredibly far in. Preparing for sprint defense or a stilts barrel. That one lifted to shallow left. Breland Almodova positioned perfectly to catch it between his legs. The trick plays are coming at an insane pace from the Stylin Hawaiian. He's now 19 for 25 overall. And he just continues to patent that between the legs catch. He was in a perfect place where he only moved about three steps before setting up to make that catch. And when you have that much time to really size up a ball, it's no surprise when Breland goes between the legs like that. The Alio sets his sights on Danny Hosley. He was ahead 1-0. He had a sack fly in the third inning that walked off the frame. So 0 for 0 with a ribeye for everybody keeping track at home. And I think Danny Hosley, pretty happy he's not facing Dylan Porter anymore. Came into the ball game today, one right, for 19 right, against Dylan Porter on the season. Now, if you Stay took right. away all 19 of those at bats against Dylan Porter, believe it or not, Danny Hosley's season batting average, instead of being 238, would be 280. And the 381 on base percentage would soar north of 400. The stats are still incredibly respectable as you get a look at that ball rolling along the roof. But boy, his at-bats against Porter have not been fun. At least not for him. That one down and out. And the inning tying run is aboard. Hosley is gonna test the party animal sprint defense. They're around the infield. Hampton to Tanner Thomas, Breland Almodova, the seventh and final man who had to touch it. And the inning tying run in scoring position as Dalton Malden's gonna pinch hit here for Noah Bridges. Up to his new single, Miss You, Love You. You heard it earlier. Give it up for Dalton Malden. Bridges had a two-base sprint and scored the inning-winning run back in the fourth. Now Dalton steps into the 10-hole heater at the bottom of the zone for strike one. The songbird of our generation certainly has had some rough times in this tour. Batting average still below the Mendoza line, but boy, has he been great recently. I mean, you talk about Dalton Malden with hits in four of his last six games, and he's already tied his monthly high in trick plays with nine. So we've seen him rolling offensively and defensively for the Bananas. Lifts this one to right. Tanner Thomas able to make the snag. Party animals are on the board in the all-important points category. They win the sixth inning by a run. It is now five to one Bananas. And still with over 40 minutes on our clock, we only have three innings on the docket to go. And Matt Wolf is being rolled out to the mound in his rodeo barrel. Dakota McFadden and Dan Oberst finding the trick pitching extraordinaire in there. Backflip onto the bump, cartwheel between the legs. And the warm-up pitches are underway. Not many guys in the world of sports who are must-watches just when they're warming up to do their job. Great to see Matt back out on the mound. I haven't seen him pitching since the Oklahoma series. And you see what he's done in 12 innings pitched, a very respectable MPI of four minutes and seven seconds. 
and a 5.25 ERA, which is below the Tours average. And what's impressive is when you look at the ERA plus metrics, Matt Wolf, a 101 ERA plus, one percentage point above league average on the Tour. It really speaks to how wildly effective he is when he's able to use all the trick pitches in his arsenal. The Joy Oklahoma native who spent time at North Central Texas College, Southeastern Oklahoma State University, and East Central University. Over in Ada, Oklahoma, home of Tyler Gillum, his head coach. Take over, he has four, five, and six in the party animals lineup as he drops Trow and his first offering misses up and out. Tanner row for two, ground out and a pop out. 360 pitch gets the low inside corner. Tanner does not agree with the call. Matt Wolf quick pitches him and his head one and two. Another 360, count even at two balls and two strikes. That one flicked past the dive of Wolf. Ryan Cox gets eaten up by a tough hop. And I just think that's a base knock for Tanner Thomas. Looking at where he was down the line, I honestly don't know if Ryan Cox even had a chance at him. As the official tally keeper in this ball game, I'm, I'm gonna rule it a hit here for Tanner. Perfect time to welcome the legend himself, Bill the Spaceman Lee, into the broadcast. How you doing tonight, Big Tiger? I'm doing good, but that's an error. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fact. I'm sure, I'm sure it was. like a true pitcher. I'm sure it was throughout the 14 years you were in Major League Baseball. We're hitters scorekeepers here in Banana Land. I know, I know. Well, I only got mad three times on that appearance. <laughs> it's not bad for a full inning of work. I know. I wanted the fan to catch that ball, but... <laughs> Yeah, I had pretty good stuff. Look good up there and always tough when you end up being tasked with the top of the party animals lineup, the murderer's row of Hampton Merry Bloomer and Skull. Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah. You're able to get Reese on a ground out and Skull on a pop out. It's the party animals. Got to be happy with that as Cornette draws the sprint on Wolf. Tanner's going to go first to third. Dalton pulls up at first base. He's now one for two on the night with the sprint. Single his last time up. And this is why you can never sleep on the party animals, even when you're up four points. Check that, five points, five innings into the ball game. These guys can hit with the best of them. And when every run in the last inning of, of a banana ball game counts as a point, they're always within striking distance. In fact, they were down five to one in the second night of the World Tour when they scored four straight in the ninth yeah. and won it in showdowns. This is the top of the zone to Chase Aka. One for two on the night, a double his first trip. Front door bender dives down. Two one count on the party animal shortstop. Bill, had you ever heard the term tally keeper before when no. referred to a scorekeeper? That one to third, Olsen to second, mauled into yes. first! Yes! Magnificent 5-4-3 double play. Party animals trade two outs for a run. And they lead the inning one to nothing, but two down. And Jackson Olsen gonna give it a little gritty after Number getting 50. that double play. I mean, you just see a nice pick over there at third base, a good throw, great cover by Dalton Malden at second, and a strong throw on the first. Again, Eric Jones Jr., a great stretch over there at the bag. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I could see the major league announcers. <laughs> I think they're gonna install air conditioning. <laughs> By the time Major League Baseball's here for the Giants and Cardinals next year. Breland is plucked. And he will use the assistance of a walker over the first base. You're not to that age yet. No. Yeah, you stay yeah. away from the walkers. Good pitch. Cartwheel and a beautiful fastball away. Joe Lytle, 0 for 1 with a couple ground oh, outs. Oh, under the glove. Hot shot evades the stab over there of Eric Jones Jr. Great one hopper to third from Danny Hosley, who has moved out to right from second base. Mr. Tally Keeper, 
Your official ruling on that one, Josh. I think that's a hit as well. Yeah. Went through the shadows, tough play. And barreled off the bat. Runners at the corners for the second time this frame. And now Jason Swan, who has flown out and popped out. I can't believe how chiseled Swan is and how slow his bat is. How about that? I mean, boy, he is a titan amongst men, huh? Yes, he is. But I throw the ball by him. It's weird. Great numbers across his five years at Georgia Southern. Has been incredibly Way to get clutch. ahead. Way to get ahead. It's a good Here th comes the hook. You can bet the house on it. See what Matt Wolf goes to. Oh, no. Between the legs. Don't throw it. Thank you. Put it in your pocket. Well, it'll scampers to second on the wild pitch. Two-minute score position. Difficult pitch here. This you got to get the strikeout. This is where Jason Swan has been amazing. Breaking ball. Slider away. Chase it. Ooh, at his head. It was a breaking ball, but a very bad one. Swanee with the second highest batting average with runners in scoring position on the tour. Really? Oh, fastball. That's two runs. He'll pick up two RBIs here. Almadova and then Lytle both scoring. Now a three spot for the party animals here in the top of the seventh inning. This is what I mentioned about leaving the door open for the bad boys of Banana Ball. Yeah. Don't let him breathe. Leland scores his 24th run of the tour, Lytle his 16th. Justin Baber. Rod Dato said when you have your opponent down, step on him. Don't let him up. We're not doing that. I believe you heard Eric Burns say that a few times last year as well. Justin Baber jigging his way up to the dish. Double and a run scored his last time up. That was off of Bill Lee. Well, if you see the line, it goes down there and then it juts out two inches. <laughs> that ball. We got it, to left. Michael Deeb will put it away for out number three. There you go. Hard hit balls and out. Down to the field we go. Third base side to my friend, the young professor. One thing I have learned here in Banana Land is grandma's like. As we head to the bottom of the seventh inning, we pop up into the broadcast booth with the spaceman himself here, Biko Scala, Josh Tolevsky, Bill Lee. And what does it mean to you for the second straight year to be here in Rick Woodfield, such a legendary spot for baseball? It's a mecca. When you saw that home run Dakota hit, that went exactly out, you know, where the longest home run hit in this ballpark was. It would have gone into the trees. It would have gone down in history. That's the hardest hit ball I've seen a banana hit all year. And it was on a line. Give it up for Susan. And, Next up, uh, he's Alex really corrected his swing. He's really quit loading up, really, and allowing on his natural strength. And he's hit the ball well the last five ball games, I think. And, and I think that's that's what it is about this. I, I see little things in all the all their bodies, and I'm trying to help them and the party animals. You know, throw more strikes, get more home runs, less walk off walks, and that's what's exciting about banana ball. You know, you can come to the park in a big league game, but here, every time, you say, boy, I never saw that before. And that's the great thing about Banana Ball, and the fans appreciate that. And they show up wherever we are. You know, it's just a great game, and I'm thankful I was able to contribute, whatever it is, but I, I'm here for good. Bill, do you, do you find yourself oftentimes imparting a lot of sage advice on a lot of the bananas? All of them. Today I did it to a Little League team from Alabama, and I talked to them about the proper way to throw a curveball without hurting yourself and how to decelerate properly, you know, and how to conduct yourself on the field. And talked to them all about John Wood, the great basketball coach. And that's what I find myself doing now. I'm, I'm doing more schooling than I've ever done before. And, I don't know what it's like, because I was never fan first. <laughs> <laughs> I was fan last. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's working. Fluke's working too fast. Slow down, Fluke. Top of the order for the Bananas here in the bottom of the seventh. They need three runs to tie the inning, four to win it. And the party animals go to 
Changeup, beautiful changeup. A man who's been as consistent of a pitcher as any as of late. Yeah. Two scoreless innings a night ago. I was a couple miles down the street at Regions Field. He wanted that pitch, that was a cutter away, but that was definitely a ball. It tailed off the plate. Maceo Harrison out coaching third base. Straight to, change coming. Trying to inspire a it rally. It was, straight change, slow roller to third, foul ball. Some English on that one. Yeah, well, it, they're really learning, you know, that you, I change speeds. I, I pitch to contact, I'm not gonna strike people out. But they don't square up the ball on me that much, except when they, look at that. Change up, he wanted that ball. I make that play, because I'm a left-hander. Number three, Eric Well, plus, you have reflexes like a cat. Meadows is one for two on the night. He was hit by a pitch and scored the inning-winning run back in the first. I'd like to get two runs here, that'd be nice. Eric Jones Jr., a strikeout and a pop-out tonight. Ball outside. Yeah, he's got a little cutter away, two seamer in, but his changeup, I think, is his best pitch. He adds a 12-6 curve and a slider as well. We had Fluke in the booth earlier tonight. He said the slider for him has improved a lot over the course of this tour. Yeah, he likes his breaking ball, too. He's a four-pitch pitcher. Works fast, smooth, doesn't have any glitches. Throws strikes. That's all you can ask for. There goes DR. Big changeup. Throw from Cornette on the money, but off the glove of Baber, backed up by Aka. Meadows two for two on the night, stealing second. He is 20 for 26 on the tour, swiping bags overall. His change is hard to read. Throws it out of his body. Ooh, another one. See you later. That might have been a slider. It was a good one, though. That looked like an excellent Number bender seven, for the self-proclaimed strikeout three. king. And passes the baton to Michael Deep, two for two, with a pair of walk-off doubles. One in the fourth, one in the first. Coach Maceo. And he That's finds that one to left center. Over the leap of Breland Almodova, all the way to the wall. Third double. Deeb has three stakes and three two-baggers. He now has 13 doubles to lead the Bananas on the tour. Hell of a day, hell of a day. Great day. DR scores for the second time tonight. And the boys will celebrate with a little line dance out on second base. Deep has now broken the tie with the man at the dish, Dan Oberst for the team lead in doubles. The extra hitter is 0 for 1 on the night, a strikeout looking his first time. Two base sprint and scored the inning winning run in the fifth. When you celebrate after just one run and you tie it up, what do you do if you tie it up here? We'll see if we learn. <laughs> just be content with tying it up, I guess. <laughs> Oh, he beat him. Little hitch in his swing. By the way, the scoreboard lies to you. The party animals scored three runs in the top of the seventh uh -oh. inning. So Dan Oberst represents the inning tying run, not the winning run. And our scoreboard has caught up. 2-1 count on a man out of Largo, Florida. Video game numbers on the tour, you get a glance at there. Line down the right field line, foul. Ooh, we needed that. Dan was looking into your dugout with a big smile on his face after barely missing an extra base knock. Trying to join Deeb once again. Straight change coming right here, he loads up. Ooh. Went with the bender. He wanted that, it was a bender all right. A little up. Three, two. I still throw a change up. No, fastball away. Dan picks up his fifth sprint between the last two nights. And he's gonna get two bases on it as Deeb scores. And Mr. Roberts, now the inning tying run in scoring position. 
how about this? Five Number sprints for Dan Ober, Dakota, and he's collected D four Madden, runs batted Madden. in on those five sprints. It's been a big weekend for Dan. His team he's high. really got confidence now. That's a fact. His team high 442 on base percentage continues to rise. And now Dakota McFadden, who walked off the first inning with the towering home run Bill was talking about earlier, will swing away. He's one for two on the night. Ball. One just outside. misses down and outside. Out. He's struggling now. Don't throw it middle end. It could be out of here. Oh, he reds for it. Get out of play. Cornette makes the snag. And two down here in the seventh. Yes. It's the second now instance in this ball game now where we've seen that expanded oh, foul play kind of hurt the bananas. You don't see a lot of ballparks with this much foul ground. Now Cornette has navigated yeah. this area twice to get catches in foul territory. That's why ERAs in Oakland are so low. We love the pitch in Oakland. Whole lot of real estate and foul territory in the Coliseum. Similar, Hola. similar well, field yeah. here in Rickwood is Jackson Olsen. One for one on the night. A single and a walk off sprint. As the fate of the seventh inning in his hands. Keep your head on it. Just base it to left. Dan Oberst on second base represents the inning tying run. Base. Olsen, Olsen the potential Olsen. winner. That was a great backdoor bender. I thought it was too. His strike zone's a little tight sometimes. I know you've had your disagreements with him. Well, I threw one right down Broadway <laughs> today. I mean, it, it entered the strike zone right at the belt. <laughs> Fluke, one strike away from escaping what has been a sweaty bottom of the seventh inning. Ball. He's lays tight, laboring. Three, two, two, two. Full count. Full count. Here we go. Ball. Now it's a full count. He's laboring. Luke just hit the wall. Let's see if he can make this three, two pitch. Very important. Here comes the payoff, pickoff attempt. No waste. Stay on the bag. You're going to score there anyway on a walk. Let's be smart. Dan oh, takes off that one. Yank foul. Bola, bola. Have you been impressed with the power you've seen from Jackson Olsen on this tour? Yes. He's got a short, quick stroke. And most right fields are the shallowest parts. And the wind seems to be blowing out the right a lot. It's a great year to be a left-handed hitter. You know, I remember when I did, but I get hit in this situation because I don't have to run hard. Ball, hit it. Oh, oh, get out of the way. You've got to get out of the way of that one. That's imperative. Number six, Ryan That cost. You cannot let that ball hit you. That's where baseball strategy is so different from it banana It is so ball. different than regular baseball. You've got to get out of the way of that ball. Jackson reaches base for the third time in as many tries. Now the inning winning run aboard. Malachi Mitchell pinch runs. And Ryan Cox. Ball, same pitch. Has a one-o oh, count got third. Dan Ober steals oh, no. third. He gets picked up. Oh, oh, here we go. Throw from A cup is errand. The inning the is tied as Dan touches home and Malachi Mitchell cruises into third base. The potential inning winning run. The inning winning run is on third. Disastrophe base. for the party animals. And that's just where you see Tyler Gillum's green light special that he used a lot of the time coaching in the CPL. Factor into banana ball here. He uses two of his best base runners to manufacture a run and tie this inning. Cornette threw it behind Dan Oberst, and credit to him, he never hesitated, had third base easily. And then with Malachi caught up, Acuff threw the ball over Skoll. All of a sudden, this inning is knotted at three runs apiece. Exactly. You, you just don't see that every day. You never see a guy steal third, a guy get picked off a of first, and then a throw. Eat him up. Oh, gutsy move 
with the potential inning-winning run about to touch home plate. Ladies Dustin Baber nails the trick play. Time, Fluke gives up three runs, and it's still States just a four-point deficit for present, the run. party animals. Dodge the bullet. We honor all the military members, both past and present, here in a full capacity Rickwood field. So I gotta stand Fans, up now, right? That's you, Bill. No, I don't want to. I was drafted. Women that serve this great nation. <laughs> well, we still we appreciate your service. Oh, I know. Whether it was your choice or not. I graduated with college, had a pregnant wife, and got drafted. Thank you for your service and commitment. You just don't get all those together. That's a Quinella. That's what they call a hat trick. That's called, boy. <laughs> I remember I got a two day bivouac to get out of Fort Polk to go see that baby. I love that baby. <laughs> I didn't have to go to the rifle range. I didn't have to crawl through the bob wire and the mud and the water moccasins. <laughs> it was the best two days of my life. Connor Higgins. Here comes Higgins. Boy, does he throw hard. It's something to watch him chuck it, huh? That other ball he threw last night for a strike, I was like, hardest ball I've seen in a long time. The flame throwing southpaw. The other side of the coin to Bill Lee's craftiness. Mr. Higgins, who averages about 95 miles per hour with his heater, has touched 99.4 before. See what he's done across nine and two thirds. Trouble has come when he has lost control, but as of late, couple great outings. Yeah, back to back great outings for Connor Higgins. And he's racked up the strikeouts at that time, giving him over a strikeout per inning on the season. Bill, have you worked with Connor seeing him give up a lot of sprints early on and then really starting to pound the zone as of late? I've been working with him, trying to get him to be smoother, not as aggressive, because when you look smooth, you throw harder, you know? And when you try to throw hard, you can't throw hard. And he's learning that difference. He should have learned it a long time ago. He'd be in the show right now, closer. Over his yeah. last three outings, Number three six, and a third three, innings pitch, ten, just ten. one hit allowed, four strikeouts, and only one sprint given up is the real key yeah. there. Higgins spent the last five years in the Los Angeles Angels organization. They drafted him in the 30th round back in 2018 out of Arizona State. A year after the Texas Rangers tried to snag him with the 30. Boy, that's a kitchenette. 35th round pick and. One pitch, one out. He gets Reese Hampton on the tapper to first. He got in his kitchen severely. Ran that ball. He won't be able to hold coffee for two days. <laughs> Ran that ball well on the hands of Hampton. Yeah, and Connor Higgins did a great job getting off the mound quickly to get Hampton. When He's you jam guys, runner. they don't they don't get out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's one thing we learned. Hampton's 0 for three on the night. Was hit by a pitch. His second trip to home plate. Now Bryson Bloomer, one for three, has only hit a blooper that drove in a run off of Bill Lee, our guest in the booth. Yeah. A little duck fart to shallow right. Ah, he was too deep. I do. I get a lot of balls hit in front of me. When I play senior ball, I have my right fielder play shallow. I give up a lot of those balls for some reason. Yo, you got plenty of room. Go get it. Don't do it fancy. Just make the play. Made that like a drunken sailor. <laughs> that was an adventure to haul in that fly ball. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see the smile on Danny Hosley's face. Oh, yeah. How impressive has it been to watch him do, what, close. He, do what he does at the dish and then be the best pitcher on the tour? Oh, by far. He's got three good pitches. He has confidence in him, and he's unhittable when he gets his breaking ball over. His fastball, he, he could close. He's Raleigh Finger's good, I think. 91 to 92 with the heater. The circle yeah. change and the 12-6 curveball are devastating backups to that fastball. It is. When you're a three-pitch pitcher, throw them over the Pitch plate. Attention, please. It your exponentially attention, please. increases your, it's amazing. We found a large Connor Higgins is fastball changeup slider. But boy, is this your was mostly day. fastball slider if this is yours, in his five years with the Angels. The oh, there he goes. At this time, 3 0 count to Jake day. Skull. Thank you. It was 0 for 2 on the night. Be smooth, throw him three fastballs right down the mile. Don't take a little off, but throw it right down Broadway. Oh, he swung at it. These guys are not bearing down. Party animals swinging back. They don't swing at a 3 0 pitch down five runs. Ball four. 
gets his sprint. And Skull, as you mentioned, down four points, not trying to do anything crazy with two outs. He's already stolen second once tonight already. Yeah. He gets his tour leading 28th ball four sprint. It's tough for a left-hander to throw right now. That sun is right in his eye. I found it difficult for me, but I pushed it away, I guess, because I threw <laughs> strike. That's right. Now Tanner Thomas. Cutting to miss on a firm heater. Front shoulder pulled out badly. Thomas one for three on the night. A single and a run scored his last time. Oh, he swung at that ball up. Now we got a runner in score position. And Bill sends that ball into right field. EJ not able to make the pick. I'll tell you, these boys get out here so early, the fans don't understand how much time they put on the field. When you get into this inning right now, in this heat, these guys are gassed. 0-2 oh, just misses the outside corner. Yeah. Good take. Bill, do you remember what you were doing in 1910 when they built Rickwood Field? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I played here in their fifth decade. Yeah, Isn't that, that was, amazing? That was even before, before I know. your time. <laughs> I fished for seven decades, and I was here in their fifth decade. That's a long time. Ooh, a curveball. See you later. Paint. <laughs> How about the kick right, and the twerk celebration from Connor Higgins? You're an amazing crowd. As he has now had four consecutive credit. terrific Jesse, outings out of the pen. We need him one more time. Yes, we do. We're at Tristan time right here. Even on and day along day, with those great outings, we've seen decreases in minutes per inning for Connor Higgins. That one, three minutes and 57 phone, seconds. And we're going to wave it, and all of us Good. are going to sing yellow. Speaking together. of so Rickwood Field being constructed, and it's all First played in in 1910. Were you good pals with Rick Woodward? Wood <laughs> you make the trip up to the booth. I've, I've got to have a couple jokes lined I know, and ready I know, for I you. <laughs> I'll tell you. Yeah, when I started playing, George Bush Sr. was first baseman at Yale. <laughs> That's a riot. Good field, no hit. <laughs> I knew him when he was head of the CIA and his son. Son and I were partying together <laughs> at the Museum of Science. Is that George W? George W and I. I got pictures. I would love to see it. They're black and day. white, but yeah. One more time. Oh, George was a party animal. That's classified documents right there. <laughs> I know. Yeah, Ari Flesher, the his secretary uh, of, of communication. Said, we're not going to justify that comment about Bill Lee. We know what kind of guy Bill Lee is. And I went right off. wonder if any of those oh. top, top secret pictures made it to Mar-a-Lago. Oh, it's different. Now, how many of these advertisements on the outfield wall in Rickwood, how many of these products have you tried, Bill? Well, U.S. Steel was big here. <laughs> yeah. Of course, it was big during the Civil War, too. <laughs> but... That was before, when they came in here, this was a steel town. People yes. don't realize this was one of the first coal deposits in the South. And they brought the steel and they manufactured all their firearms for the Civil War. They called it Pittsburgh of the South. It was the Pittsburgh of the South. You know, it fell on hard times and it's the Rust Belt. We shipped everything off to China. And, uh, I'm not going to get into the politics of that. <laughs> That's a good idea. We can get back into Banana Ball under 10 minutes to play, bottom of the eighth inning. This is good. Banana's up four points, and they've got the bottom of the order trying to go to work against Tucker Perry. Just Eight, nine, one ten. One run right here. Leroy Hosley and then Bridges. Hey, first pitch strike. Let's see if he can do two in a row. I told him to quiet down his hands, get comfortable. There's two. Well, I work with both teams. That's what I was just about to ask. You're not afraid to impart your wisdom no, on anybody. I, I wanted to be traded to the party animals because I found out they had beer in their clubhouse. <laughs> <laughs> but I just go in there anyway. The Royal for one, a fly out. He's a lot quieter today. And a one base sprint, and that one is called strike three. Yeah, it was a good pitch. Four pitches, three strikes, and Tucker's 
fired yeah, up. Don't celebrate. It's the first out in two days. <laughs> he did get one out last night. Oh, that's night. right. He jammed Jones. First pitch of his outing. I told him to take a pitch, and he, he just couldn't lay off. That is only Bill Leroy's eighth strikeout of the tour. He ties Dalton Cornett now for the tour low. Through that ball for him. Get back in that groove. Tucker basically gifted the Bananas the win last night. Three straight sprints turned a 3-2 game into a 4-3 win for the Nanners. But when he is on, he's insanely deceptive. Tough to barrel up. Now he's 2-0. He's in trouble. Well, especially... He has trouble when he gets it behind the count for one strike. Head in the count, he's all right. Especially Boy, when tough he gets by, he starts thinking, let's see what happens on this 2-0 pitch. Oh, man. Thank you. Vinny DeRubian. Oh, yeah. Get back, get back, get back. Reese Hampton tries to go under his leg. He clangs it off his mitt. Now one for two on the night and trick plays seven for 15 on the tour. And an opportunity for your nanners here, Bill. Right. Here we go. Dalton Malden flew out to right when he pinch hit for Noah Bridges in the sixth. He's not going anywhere. I don't think. Y'all, if you know the words, sing along. Ball. Oh, that ball was around the plate. Gets the outside corner, according to Vincent Chapman. Vinny uh. Derubius over at first base. Three for three on the tour in his stolen base attempts. One of those was a swipe of first. He represents the inning winning run. Now less than seven minutes on the clock. Perry's got to get two outs or let the inning be walked off in that time or else the ball game's gonna end here in the eighth. Maceo Harrison helping the full capacity crowd sing the Fresh Prince of Bel Air theme song. That one misses inside. One two count on the songbird of our generation. Very, very nice Birmingham. Ooh. 2-2 two, two count. Perry out of Pauley's Island, South Carolina. Spent time in college at USC Aiken, Concord University. University. Hit it over the left fielder's head. He's in way too shallow. Finished up at USCB. Breland is in incredibly shallow. Oh, he got a pitch to hit and he got jammed. Tanner Thomas pretty far in and right as well. Dalton's got pop. Hit a home run in the summer series this past August. An 0-2 count has run full. Keep it going, Banana Land. You're running here. First, let him go, make sure he go home. Make sure he goes home. Oh, he's shaking his hands. This ball four. Vinny oh, stays put, but that one right is in dunked front in front of the incredibly shallow Breland Almadova. That's a jam. How about Dalton Malden as of late? Five hits in his last seven games played. It's what you love to see for the guy who came into this ball game hitting below 200. But heating up lately. Passes the baton to DR Meadows at the top of the order who has a 1-0 count. It's really impressive considering Dalton had two hits all of April and May and now has four hits in the month of June. Oh, wow. Baseball never ceases to amaze. Ball's up. 2-0 count on the Nainer center fielder. One for two on the night. Single hit by a pitch, has scored twice. Swiped two bags. I'll take a break. I'll take a strike here. DR swinging away. That one's 
foul down the third baseline. Close. Missed what would have been his 14th walk off of the tour by less than an inch. Still in the driver's seat. Had two balls and a strike. Make it two and two. Went through a hole. Went right to the screen. That's what I'm doing. Pretty magical to see Rick Woodfield jam-packed, huh, Bill? It is. They're, I mean, the people here, are, they just don't see that. And it's been the only people that have done it is us. We're the only people that packed this place. Get down. That's going to drop. It does, right but on. foul. Ooh. Nice try. Good job of spoiling the 2-2 offering there from the doctor. The pride of Vidalia, Georgia. Trying to bring in the Italian Stallion from second base. Cut and a miss. Fastball in. And DR is going to sheath his sword. Two Se out strikeouts in this inning. Second Number strikeout three. of the inning for Mr. Perry. Now Eric Jones Jr., who has struck out twice tonight, 0 for 3, popped out his other trip to the dish. Right, with song Characteristic stops. 0 for 3 night with a couple Ks for one of the tour's best hitters. Quickly behind, no balls and two strikes. He's tired. You can see it. Come on, just lay the bat on the ball. Base hit up the middle. Foul, just got a piece of it. Well, yeah, he's... Less than two minutes on the clock. Oh, that ball jammed him bad. Broke his bat. EJ needs a new piece of lumber. Tyler Gillum delivers it. A minute and a half left now on our two hour timer. What's up? Count one and two on the Nanner's first baseman. Oh, that ball broke his bat too, or is, boy, is he tired. Oh, look at that. Third bat used in this at bat. Shades of Mariano Rivera versus Ryan Klesko in the 99 World Series. Ball two. Two and two now with 40 seconds on the clock. Oh, that's that trouble. Dotted. A cuff to Baber. And Perry survives the bottom of the eighth inning. Here comes the young professor. It's time to cast your gaze upon that fantastic scoreboard here at the world's oldest ballpark. You see the score now is five to one as we head into the ninth inning. Ninth inning is the final inning, which means in the game of banana ball, every run counts for a point. That means the party animals have one last shot here for every run to count and mount their comeback. On the other side of that, the bananas need just three outs to cement their victory here at Rickwood Field today. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise and welcome to the final. And ladies and gentlemen, it's time Bill Lee, we, we cannot thank you enough for coming up into the booth. We want to let you get down. Oh, pressure. And celebrate with your teammates as they are three outs away from a victory here in Rickwood and Ryan Kellogg set to make his bananas debut. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Thanks for having me. Absolutely our pleasure. Uh, great. It's great to be up here and lose 12 pounds. <laughs> yeah, a sauna up here. Here, let's, let's grab the headset from you before you pull our whole soundboard down. Thank you very much. There goes the spaceman, a legend of the game. And boy, is it cool to have him in the booth. I mean, every time he's up here, you just want to soak up everything he has to say, uh, whether he's cracking a joke or saying something 
uh, very profound about the game of baseball or the game of banana ball. Uh, man, he's just an interesting figure to listen to. The numbers you just got to look at there is what Ryan Kellogg did with the Wild Health Genomes in the Atlantic League last summer. I was coming off of six years in the Chicago Cubs organization, made it all the way up to AAA. Just came back from Argentina where he was pitching for Team Canada in the Pan Am Games. This one flicked out to second. He gets Dalton Cornett on the flare. Malden 11, able to snag it. Party Animals down to their final two outs. Yeah, and the key for Kellogg in this ball game, as we've already reached the two-hour time limit, is just work quickly, throw as few pitches as possible, and try and get these Party Animals up. Three up, three down. Sweep Birmingham, win the state of Alabama as Kellogg makes a great play right by the pitcher's mound and flips on to first to Eric Jones. And the key is get two batters out very quickly. We're at 45 seconds here on the MPI. Sweet Birmingham and set a great MPI mark, which he could do. How about the athleticism from the six foot six Southpaw out of Whitby, Canada? Drafted by the Blue Jays in the 12th round back in 2012. And then the Cubs again in the fifth round of 2015. Now the former Arizona Diamondbacks product stands in the way. Of a banana's victory. Breland still has the donut on his bat. And we'll take a backdoor bender for strike one. Count 0 and 2. Kellogg, two seam, four seam fastballs, change up slider, curveball. And just misses down and out. That one cranked foul. Back-to-back -back lefties out of Arizona State as Kellogg relieves Connor Higgins. Pounding the zone, this one bounced to Dalton Molden. Behind his back, over to first. The Bananas have won Rickwood Field round two and take the great state of Alabama three games to one. Rickwood Field here in Dominating Alabama, five to one house. victory Your for the Nanners tonight. And a heck of a debut oh, in Banana so Land for Ryan Kellogg. So How about you, so you throw your first Thank ever you inning in Banana Ball and you Rick set an Rick MPI Field. under two minutes. And Ryan and Kellogg, one pleasure. minute and 54 seconds. Kellogg. That's good enough to be tied for 42nd all time in Banana Ball history. He's locked there with the Nanners starter tonight, Cowboy Kyle who went five shutout. And, and we will toss this thing down to Bill Leroy as he shouts out himself, Kyle, Kellogg, and the rest of the boys after a dominating win. One last time, myself, Bill Leroy. Up next, we have our wonderful coaches, Coach Adam Byron and Coach Tyler Gillard. And of course, our amazing entertainers, Fastest man in baseball, Flash the Kid. We have our rodeo clown, trick pitcher, Matty Wolf. We have our bat trickster, Mr. Alex Ziegler. And the tallest man in banana ball, Mr. Still, Dakota Albrin. And last but not least, our dancing first base coach, Maceo. We have our pitchers in reserve, starting pitcher, Cowboy Kyle, Derek Dawson, Matt Malatesta, Connor Higgins, DJ the Invader, Christian Dearman, and Ryan Kellogg. Holding down the first base position tonight, number three, Mr. Eric Jones. Up next, playing right field tonight, you know him and love him, call him baby. Savannah Bananas, Heartthrob, Noah Bridges. The slugger, the man himself, rocking number 19, Danny Overs. Rocking the YMCA tonight, coming to the plate, number 18, Danny Hosley. Our glove magician, our trick shortstop, number six, Ryan Todd. 
the man in center field, starting the game with two amazing catches, the doctor, number five, D.R. Meadows. So now get face this, but singing his own song, Miss You, Love You, check it out on Spotify, Don't Molly. The Italian Stallion, number 41, Vincent DeRubius. Leaving the yard tonight, going over the clock in left center field, number 24, Dakota McFadden. Three hits tonight, the barrel man, number seven, Michael D. Last but certainly not least, our social media star and our greatest showman, number eight, Jackson Olsen. It was electric and so much fun. We're going to be all out there in front of the stadium, every player, every cast member, to thank you guys and tell you how much we love you. Thank you, Banana Nation. We love you guys. We'll see you out front. What a wonderful return to Rick Woodfield, Biko Scala, and Josh Tulevsky wrapping a legendary second ever game here in America's oldest ballpark up. And the Nanners win this one in dominating fashion, five points to one. It all starts with Cowboy Kyle Lewis, who goes five scoreless, and now has only given up three runs over his last 22 and a third innings. He's really finding his groove in June. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say anything other than that, whether it's against challengers or now the party animals. Kyle Lewis is rolling. He now has even his win-loss record at five apiece, combined with these teams. I mean, Kyle Lewis is just doing great stuff out on the mound. He's found uh, a way to throw that fastball and also work off the slider, and I I think that's where he's finding success against the party animals and other opponents. Banana ball and baseball are amazing sports in the stats world, obviously. That's why Josh and I are so in love with this thing. And of course, Kyle Lewis, no wins in uh, his first 19 starts on the tour when it came to his games against the party animals, first 18 rather. Now he's gotten a W in each of his last two. You just never know what's gonna happen. And then how about Bill Lee gets a full inning, Matt Wolf gets a full inning, and then Connor Higgins and Ryan Kellogg both looked great in the eighth and ninth. And that, I think, when you're looking towards possible long-term success for the Bananas, is where this team could really turn around if you have both of those former minor leaguers really at the top of their game. Look, the Bananas knew that they wanted to add some more left-handed pitchers into that bullpen, and Higgins and Kellogg both have very impressive resumes. And now in tonight's game, you really got to see the results out there. Higgins with the great outing, Kellogg, the MPI, again, under two minutes. These guys know how to pitch, and they can pitch well in banana ball. It's really all about throwing strikes. We're seeing that from Higgins now and Kellogg with an impressive debut tonight. And of course, you have to tip your cap to the offense as well. They walked off each of the first five innings, so every time Kyle handed them a goose egg, they capitalized, and Michael Deeb was the king tonight. Three for three, three RBI doubles, two of them walked off innings. What more can you want from the king of barrels? And not only that, but you factor in Dakota McFadden hitting the Bananas' first home run since May 29th in Tulsa. 
great to see that one of the furthest balls Bill Lee has hit has seen hit this season. Right. I mean, just an incredible blast off the bat of McFadden. And the Bananas, the offense was really rolling from all angles. They had some sprints. They were able to get on base, of course, because of hit by pitches as well, get their base knocks. It was an all-around balanced offensive approach from the Nanners today. And the Bananas are now four games over 500. Three games ago, they had never been two games over 500. They won the opening night all the way back on February 17th in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. Florida and had never been more than a game above 500 till uh, a few games ago. Now they have won three straight. They have swept back-to-back -back series on the road, dating back to them winning Friday and Saturday night in Nashville at the start of this month when they had never swept a series on the road at all. Boy, are they really coming around here as we're a little bit past the halfway mark in the tour. We are really starting to see this team put some things together, specifically pitching-wise. A lot of the times the Bananas have hurt themselves when they've allowed too many ball four sprints, but we have seen them have excellent command of the strike zone. And Tyler Gillum and Adam Byron have figured out the way that they want to line up that lineup. You continue to see a lot of the same guys batting in the same spots. I mean, one through seven practically a lock each and every night when you start with DR all the way to Ryan Cox. You just continue to see the Bananas just dominate in May, 8-1, and one, and we've got to talk about some trick plays, of course. 12 in tonight's game, 9 from the Bananas, 3 from the Party Animals, and 28 total trick plays in Birmingham in these two games, the most in any two-game series on the tour this year. Yeah, there is no doubt about that. The Bananas now 25-21-2. and two. The Party Animals are 18-17-2. It's the Nanners 8-3 record against Challengers. That has them four games above 500, and it's been the Party Animals' dominance in historic Grayson Stadium that still keeps them north of 500, but they don't get to play in Grayson for a long time now as we will next be in action on Thursday night in Indianapolis. We'll be back in the Eastern time zone. Uh, typical 6.45 pregame, 7 p.m. first pitch, somewhere around there, 6.30 at the earliest that we will start that thing up. You'll see that on Nander's social media when you get uh, another taste of that. But two games in Indy, two games in Akron, and then the Florida Collegiate All-Stars come to Savannah. The party animals are going to have to figure out a way to win on the road because they're not playing in Savannah for a long time now, and there are only uh, eight, I think there's only eight games left in Grayson Stadium throughout the rest of the tour, maybe nine. It's, it's really hard to kind of figure out why the party animals are struggling, but I think the key thing that I'm starting to pinpoint is just the fact that games have been a little far and few between for the party animals. You yeah. talk about the bananas playing three against the drop bears, then the party animals supposed to play one against them, but that game is unfortunately rained out. So it's hard to find, uh, to f get some consistent offense and even lock in in terms of your pitching when you just play games so infrequently. Yeah, could not agree more. So as I mentioned, Indy Indianapolis on Thursday night. That's going to be over 14,000 fans back-to-back -back nights in a triple-A ballpark. Beautiful spot. Pittsburgh Pirates triple-A team there. It's going to be really, really fun. The Nanners one win away from evening the season series against the Party Animals. At the worst, they were five games back from their arch rivals. Boy, how the turntables, huh? What a ride it's been in June for the Nanners. It has been truly fantastic to watch, and they really will want to keep it rolling in Indiana and Akron, Ohio. Okay, we wipe the sweat from our brows in the hottest broadcast booth of all time. Let's shout out our casted crew before we shut this thing down. Our technical director who drove from the control room in Savannah, where he was our technical director last night, from Grayson Stadium. Now he is in Birmingham and helped us put on this show from Rickwood. Griffin Ellis, you are an absolute legend of the game and your story of BTV just gets better by the day. Our director, as well as technical director, Griffin Ellis, two jobs for one man. That's just how good he is. On the first base camera tonight, it was Dakota Burnsed and across the diamond, the Iron Horse, Emerson Elmgren. What a dynamic duo they are. It doesn't matter what corner of the infield you put them on. They have the coverage absolutely locked down. Our high home cameraman up on the roof here of Rickwood Field, Ben Barks, absolutely killed it. And on center field in a makeshift uh, gadget type deal for Taylor to be on that has now disappeared. Fantastic work out there, Taylor. Really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, Chad Reese said it's called a lift. Okay, I guess it was actually a little more official than I saw with my eyes from here. Our drone and wireless cameraman, Nick Keldy, 
Absolute Legend, a.k.a. DJ Squint, and our utility who delivered those delicious hot dogs, Mr. Carson Gray. Thank you so much to the entire crew. Josh Tulevsky killed it on the color commentary as per usual. Biko, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I teased in the game before tonight that this was going to be the world's sexiest broadcast of the year. I think this was actually the world's sweatiest broadcast of the year. So looking forward to stepping on a scale with you after this game and seeing who lost more weight. Yeah, this feels like uh, I'm training to make weight back in 10th and 11th grade in high school. I mean, I'm absolutely drenched. Uh, as I mentioned, Chad Reese, our coordinating producer, the straw that stirs the drink, that makes everything happen. Thanks so much, Chad. You are a superstar. And thank you to Dustin Baber, Sean Fluke, and Bill Lee for popping on the broadcast tonight. We really appreciate you. For the executive producers of Bananas TV, Jared Orton, as well as Emily, Jesse, and Carrie Cole, I am Biko Scala saying so long for now. We will see you Thursday night as the Nanners and Party Animals battle in Indianapolis. Nanners win this one 5-1. to one. They have now taken the great state of Alabama. Three states to two in the Nanners' favor after the party animals took Oklahoma and Texas. It is Florida, Tennessee, and Alabama in the Bananas' favor. We'll see if they can grab Indiana as well. It'll be Thursday night. We'll see you then. And, of course, we'll see you later! We'll, uh, we'll edit it in post. <laughs>